How's it going, Frosty friends, and welcome to our Team Theory and Fundamental series, where it's all about the team. In this segment, I'll be giving you the scoop on things like common team plays that you'll see in scenarios that come up frequently in Apex Legends, as well as the core concepts of good teamwork that will help you work with just about anyone that you'll find uh, during your games. Now, today's topic is going to be about getting a third party sandwich and how to deal with it. This is going to be an especially important situation to be able to handle this season because, or the first split of this season, because it takes place on Kings Canyon. The smaller map size as well as the, the smaller map size is going to make it so that it's easier for squads to hear first any fighting that's going on around them and then actually reposition to be able to third party that fighting uh, after the So, in order to help get you set up for the new season, we are going to be giving you a couple of plays that you'll be able to draw from, that, so that you'll be able to make decisions more quickly. These situations uh, of getting third party happen so quickly that you need to be able to make a sound decision immediately. And so having a plan in place, even a simple one, is going to help you speed up your decision making by a huge, huge amount. So let's get uh, started with picking up the right weapons. Uh, so let's get started with the uh, different plays that you have at your disposal. So the first one is going to be slipping the third party, and so and slipping out. So just between, if you're ever sandwiched between two squads, it's extremely generally, uh, it's extremely unlikely, generally speaking, that you are going to be directly between, like perfectly between two of the enemies, uh, two enemy squads. So there's probably going to be at least like some offset to the left or right where the two enemies will, like it's easier and closer for them to approach along one of those sides. And so in those situations, what you, what slipping out means is you're going to move out of being the sandwiched squad in the third party it opens up a path of least resistance between the two enemy squads. And you're going to avoid passing through that shortest line of approach between the two enemies so that they don't shoot at you as you make your cover transitions to get out of this otherwise disadvantageous situation. Uh, this is probably my most commonly used tactic when it comes to getting sandwiched and most players have probably done this to some capacity. Uh, as as they play the game, and it should generally speak, uh, speaking, I think, be the uh, the tactic that you reach for first. Now, certain legends are going to be a little bit more helpful in help uh, accomplishing this particular maneuver than others. Specifically, legends that provide their squad with mobility options. Uh, in particular, Wraith is probably just de facto going to be the best, and I I know I probably sound like I'm beating a dead horse when I keep going on and on about Wraith, but I play her for a reason, and it's because that portal literally helps your squad relocate across the map with zero chance of them actually being hit along the way. And there's no other legend in the game that offers that that strong of a guarantee in terms of being able to get from point A to point B without getting hit. Other legends that uh, can still be helpful, you may, might see Pathfinders using their, their zip lines, Horizon using Q, her, which is her gravity and lift ability, as well as... As well as Octanes potentially using their jump pad, all to help their squads reposition and find just a alternative angles when they're trying to get away from these enemy squads. Um, excuse me. Once you've completed the... So once you've left the immediate vicinity of the two squads that are third partying you, you can wrap on one of the enemy squads by finding a different angle to approach them from. If the circle is going to be a concern, you're going to want to be careful about which squad you choose to go on, making sure that you're keeping the circle to your back. 
uh, all health, things being held equal, however, you're going to want to try and target whichever of the two squads is in the stronger position, since you'll be able to have a little bit more help when it comes to dealing with them, and you won't be leaving yourself a tough fight to deal with later on. The other options you have are you can just completely disengage from the fight altogether and move to gatekeep the enemy squads and prepare for them to get pushed in uh, by the circle. Two squads that wind up having to fight, these two squads that will probably wind up having to fight each other as they chase you uh, will delay their rotation to give you an opportunity to get in front of them and take advantage of their slow rotation. The second tactic you're going to have at your disposal is going to be threading the needle. As the name implies, threading the needle means passing between the two enemy squads. Specifically, you're going to be looking to use this tactic when you are in situations where the circle is more of a concern. It's definitely a lot riskier than slipping out, but it bears a lot of similarities. The overall idea is just trying to reposition to get into a better place within the situation, which is generally speaking how you deal with getting third partied and sandwiched to begin with. So, circles one and two, my suggestion generally speaking is going to probably just be to make a circle run and use the slipping out uh, tactic before engaging, re-engaging to the fight uh, from a more advantageous angle. When you get to circles three and beyond, the cost of running the circle becomes too high. And you wind up having to sometimes use this thread the needle tactic in order to be able to get into a safe position. The next tactic that you're going to have at your disposal is going to be locking it down. So you're going to be looking for a strong position Kill the enemy. and you will likely be using either a building or a piece of high ground in order to set up against enemy squads and prepare to generally just weather the storm as the two other squads fight around you. Legends that are going to be more helpful with this are definitely going to be the more defensively oriented legends like Watson, Caustic, and maybe even Rampart with the changes that she saw in Season 8. When you're employing this maneuver, you're going to want to make sure that you're definitely careful and selective about which position you select, especially on King's Canyon, where the buildings themselves are, generally tend to have a lot more holes in them than the buildings did on World's Edge. So the last tactic that your squad will have available to you in these kinds of... well, can have available to you. There, there may be more. I, I, this isn't an exhaustive list of all the things you could possibly do. But the last option that your squad will have available to you in these situations is going to be hard committing into one of the enemy squads. This is by far the riskiest of all the maneuvers, since even if you defeat the first squad, you're still inherently sandwiched behind by another squad who can observe that you're pushing one of the enemy squads and then hard commit into you as well uh, before, well, picking up your squad. Should not be ideal. That's, that's what we're trying to avoid. So this tactic of hard committing can become more viable if your squad for whatever reason just smells blood in the water. So if you've got some sort of big advantage or you feel like the enemy is in a bad position or whatever, then you may find yourself reaching for this tactic because it's just viable to attack the enemy at that point in time. So if your squad does smell blood in the water, you may decide to reach for this tactic. What's most important in these situations is going to be wrapping up that fight as quickly as you possibly can. And then hopefully giving your squad enough time to reset or having to take on the rest of the enemy squad. 
That's the last of that squad. This dimension. You know, so as you saw there, right, like there are a lot of squads involved in that situation and effectively like our squad universally employed the uh, hard committing option into each of the enemy squads since we were, I guess, just mechanically superior and arriving at a, with a slightly better timing. So even though that there were other squads that were coming in to follow up behind us, it didn't really matter because we had already defeated the squad ahead of us. So I guess that's one of the options in action the general f so that's all four of the tactics and the general flow chart you're going to be looking at that i think will give you the most consistent results in terms of you know emerging on top at the end of the situation are going to be first you're going to want to look into repositioning hopefully doing so without having to pass between the enemy squads in the case, the event that you do, however, then you're going to want to make sure that you're able to make it into the circle as a result. I have located the next ring. Trust your maps. Oh my god, she got that battery off just in time. Better need to make them do some of the work here. In the event that you can't reposition, then you're going to want to go ahead and reach for your next option. You're just going to be locking it down uh, with some kind of cover advantage. If that's not going to be an option that's available to you. If that's not going to be an option, then you're just going to have to reach for your final option, which is going to be hard committing into the enemy squad. Doesn't fix your sandwich situation, but it does give you at least a fighting chance in dealing with all of the enemies overall. Definitely better than just running around in an uncoordinated fashion, trying to figure out what to do next. I don't know, this loadout seems to be working for me weirdly enough. I guess it's just because there's like just been a lot of fighting. Let's just see if I can keep making things happen with this magically. I think it's actually just because, mechanically speaking, the most people in this lobby are not particularly skilled, fortunately. So yeah, so very simple flowchart, right? Reposition, defend a uh, reposition if you can first. Lock it down if you can't, and hard commit as a final resort. So, I'll do my best to see if I can find some examples to point out to you all, uh, and help you guys sort of see some see some of these examples in action. No guarantees though, and if I don't find anything, then that's the end of the video today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all later.